Welcome to Okaboji Broadcast. I'm Jeff Thee. We're going to be talking with State Representative from District 1, of course, here for Dickinson County. Uh, John Wells is going to be talking to us here in just a moment. But Okaboji Broadcast is brought to us by these great sponsors, and I thank them certainly. By Lakes Regional Healthcare and Avera Partner, Brands Law Office in Spirit Lake, Synergy Chiropractic and Acupuncture in Okaboji, Bloom and Leonard Agency in Esteville, and HP Insurance Agency with offices in Sibley and Rock Rapids, Ruth Van Locker in Spirit Lake, Beck Engineering in Spirit Lake, and B Radiant Laser Skin Studio. Studio, located in Lakes Dermatology in Spirit Lake. Well, Representative Wills, you know, we went from almost a surreal, and we're all in a surreal world right now, but we went from Saturday to people making posts on Facebook joking about the toilet paper shortage and people right. hoarding water and doing these things. And then Sunday night, when uh, Governor Reynolds uh, asked schools to, to close, I think all of a sudden things got real, uh, right. to say the least. So, and then of course, you know, then I think it was the following day that uh, shut down restaurants, bars, casinos, that sort of thing. In your estimation, um, how do you think the governor is doing handling this situation? And I ask that with this in mind, generally when governor, whether Democrat or Republican, makes a tough decision. Um, on the other side of the aisle, there's a lot of pushback. And I know there's some of that, but I have not heard a great deal of it. So just the estimation of how Governor Reynolds is doing right now. Well, I think the governor is doing an awesome job right now. She's uh, doing what she feels is, uh, is the most important things uh, to protect our citizens, to protect our, our state, and to keep our uh, state healthy and being able to recover very quickly after this emergency is all over with. And so, uh, you know, you hear about a lot of the different stories and a lot of different things that happened in China. These are some of the measures that happen in China. The difference is China is a little bit less free. Yes. And so sometimes it kind of hurts us a little bit more because we're not used to being told, hey, you can't go out or you can't do this or you can't do that. And so I think that's kind of the difference. Um, this did really stop the virus spread in Wuhan, China. Um, and in fact, I heard today that they have had no new reported cases in Wuhan. I heard the very same thing, that to, yeah. for the first time in I don't know how many weeks, no right. reported new cases. So that that's an important precedent to be set worldwide. Yeah. Now, whether to believe that or not, because it is the Chinese government, um, but at least I think we're moving in the right, or they're moving in the right direction. I think we're already starting to move in the right direction before it even uh, kind of hit us with catastrophic results. Yeah, and I, I feel that the initial shock that uh, hit people, whether it was Sunday night or, or Monday, is starting to not wear off, but wane a little bit. And now people are looking at ways, not only can I, how can I keep myself healthy, how can I help my friends and neighbors? So that, yeah. that initial, oh my gosh, type scenario is becoming, okay, this is the situation we're in, what do we have to do? Yeah, you're exactly right. You know, several weeks ago, I started telling people, you know, this is not a matter of if we get this virus, it's a matter of when. And when that happens, it's basically all hands on deck. Uh, we all have to be just able to willing, able and willing to pull together and just help each other out. Uh, especially, you know, like my mom, for example, uh, she's an elderly lady being tested for COPD right now. So she's in the, the target. Uh, so I really, having been down in, in Des Moines, I really don't feel comfortable going to her uh, because of my potential risk of exposure. Absolutely. So it's, it's really, um, you know, contingent upon my mom's neighbors right now to provide anything that she, she needs. I'm going to do whatever I can. Uh, in the meantime, but there's many of my moms around, many yeah. neighbors just like my mom, and so we need to just pull together, all hands on deck, and just be Iowa nice, and uh, we can get through this, and it's going to be not a not a big deal uh, once we get through it. But I'm hearing so many people right now come up to me and say, "I wish we had this every once in a while because we're just having so much fun with game night, and we're just <laughs> having so much fun just talking, you know, getting back to know each other again." And so I think there's some of that too. Is yeah. like, 
hey, this is kind of getting us back into the mode of recognizing where we should be to begin with. Yeah, we're, we're connecting with those people in our house, whoever they are. You know? <laughs> so I, I looked at Kathy the other day, I said, this, this woman is in my house. And <laughs> yeah, it's like, what is that? You're not, you don't have something in front yeah. of you. <laughs> yeah, there's no football game or baseball game or anything. Well, and how did, can you tell me how the, the governor is uh, receiving counsel on the decision she's making? Is she reaching out to, to leadership on both sides of the aisle, certainly, you know, the yeah. CDC, Iowa Department of Health, and so forth? I will tell you, on Monday, we temporarily suspended the legislature, and uh, through that whole process, the governor's office was very involved, and I, I being in leadership, uh, saw the minority party, the, the Democrats, and the, both the House and the Senate getting together with the majority, us are Republicans in the House and the Senate, and the governor's office, and we all just worked through it together. And, uh, you know, when an emergency strikes, you just, uh, there is no R's or D's. It's just, hey, let's get busy and fix this and let's make it for the, for the best for the state of Iowa. Sure. And that's exactly what's happening. Now, that's on the state level. Now, the governor, I know, is, is her office and staff is working directly with the CDC. There are weekly uh, phone calls with uh, Vice President Pence's office okay. and, and that whole task force that the president has assigned. And really, I've heard a lot of good things uh, coming and what's what's going on in Washington D.C. Uh, down all the way to the state and even to the county levels. Uh, I've you know of course Lyon, Osceola, and Dickinson County are my district, right. and all three counties have very great contingency plans. They're prepared. They're yes. ready to go. So I'm really excited. I'm not excited. That's the wrong word. <laughs> I'm happy. Please, uh, that yes. that's uh, that's where we're at, and we're just ready. I, I don't want it to happen here. The likelihood that it will is is great. Uh, but we're ready. Yes. Um, now, as far as the legislative session, you know, and, and I don't know how far you were into what we refer to as the 100-day session. Uh, well, you can throw that one out the window. But how do you continue to legislate? Are you still in, in uh, whether it's teleconferencing and so forth? Are, are you um, talking to individuals both in your party committees that you sit on, John? Exactly, yeah. So we, we were a little bit over halfway through that 100-day mark. Uh, I think April 21st is our final official day. Um, so we temporarily suspended the session, but that doesn't mean we've stopped work. Uh, so we're working on issues right now and, and trying to figure out where we're going to go. Uh, we will eventually come back in the session. Right now what we did was we gave ourselves 60 days in which to operate. So we have budget, we have everything uh, that the state needs to keep our government in operation for 60 days. So we will need to come back in within that 60 days. Uh, we kind of gave ourselves a one month, uh, you know, we temporarily halted it for a month right. with the option to extend it for some more. So we could potentially come in on March 15 and just finish, uh, or April 15th, I'm sorry, yeah, right. and just finish the ses session. Everything that we're hearing that might be a little bit ambitious and it may be more towards the May uh, right. time frame. Uh, but when we do that, we'll come back in and we'll do our priority bills. Uh, we'll finish those, send those to the governor and our budgets, and we'll more than likely be done for the year. Uh, but we'll, we'll definitely make sure that we have things set up for this emergency and also a contingency for this fall if it should happen to come back, like, say, the Spanish flu or you know something like that right. way back when. Um, because that's a serious concern. We don't know enough about this, this virus to know how does it act during the summer, uh, will it come back in the fall or anything like that. Right. So we've got to be prepared for that. And we will have experienced it one time too, as we move forward, whether it's uh, something similar or, or, or another infectious, that, okay, we've been through this before, and we kind of have steps in place of what we need to do. Exactly. So, yeah, that led me to my next question with, you know, as far as because um, bills are supposed to become, or past bills and budget's supposed to become law on July 1st, that's the start of the fiscal year for the state, cities, counties, and so right. forth. And uh, that's why I was wondering how you were going to get there. And, and how about priorities for yourself, uh, stuff that... Uh, uh, that were important to you moving in and maybe still sitting in committee and, and no vote taking yet. Where do you stand on the things that are your priorities? Well, I, I did not make it a secret. I spent a lot of time with the governor's office uh, helping her with Invest Iowa, uh, which is an act that um, funded the three-eighths of a cent, the I will, but also did some tax uh, reform, um, property tax and, and income tax, and also uh, funded mental health. Um, and uh, gave a child care tax credit. Uh, so those are the main main portions of that. 
Uh, so I'd still like to see if we could salvage some of that bill. I think there's still some good things, but I also want to be cognizant of the fact that well, our, our economy has taken a downturn, there's no doubt about it, and how do we react to that and make sure that we still have a prudent budget um, for the next year. And the uh, Revenue Estimating Committee did come back in on uh, a few days ago and said that probably in 2021, which starts on July 1st of 20, right. um, that we're probably gonna be down $12 million uh, in total. Now they were, rumors were they were gonna probably increase it to 50 million until COVID, until this COVID uh, thing happened. So that's about a $62 million decrease from where they were, yeah. which is, that's not chump change. Right. <laughs> um, so we gotta really look at that and how that's going to affect our, our budget as a whole. So a lot of work to be done yet, and uh, and just during this time, everybody is doing what they can, and it, I think it's wonderful to see people stepping up, helping friends, neighbors, community members, and so forth. And uh, is there anything from as a representative of our area in Des Moines and the legislature that you want to pass along to people, John? Well, I just want to say, listen, you know, we are a great people. Uh, the state of Iowa is a great state and we have been blessed uh, and now we're, we're going through a challenge and it's a challenge. We're going to get through this and we're going to be better for it and so I'm really looking forward to when we come out of this and we're better people because of it uh, what we can accomplish and what we can do. And accomplish we will my friend and I thank you for taking time with me and talking to the your constituents and uh, anytime you want to get some word out please feel free to, you, you know how to nab me. So. Yeah, well, thank you. And thank you to your sponsors for, for doing this because this is a great way to get our word out and to uh, have uh, folks be able to talk to you, talk to the people out in the street. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of done having um, forums for the year. Yeah. We're just not going to do that. <laughs> so really, this is one way that I can really um, be in connection with, with the folks out there. Of course, they can always call me or contact me anytime as well. Yeah, and I was I was just going to say that that uh, we are blessed that we live in this age where people can uh, think of this that happened 40 years ago. Uh, it had been people trying to get a, a phone call through and busy signal and, and send letters. Now they can get instantaneous response from you via email and so forth. So Exactly. Uh, what is your uh, contact if people do want to contact you, John? Sure. My phone number is 712-330-9492. That's my cell phone. 712-330-9492. My email is kind of long. It's probably <laughs> easier to look it up on the Iowa State Legislature website. I'll put it on the screen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just long. Yeah, it's just long, <laughs> but it's worth it. And, and John will uh, respond to you as uh, immediately as he possibly can. Mr. Representative, thanks again for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. We are so pleased to have State Representative John Wills here with us today. And we thank you, as always, for watching us right here on Okaboji Broadcast.